There are lots of places in the world you can go off-roading, but one of the names that stands out is here in the United States, the Rubicon Trail. If you're anywhere close to being a serious hardcore off-roader, you know the Rubicon Trail already. This is the Wrangler Rubicon and today we are on the Rubicon Trail testing out what the new car feels like. The car is coming to India in the last quarter of this year and let's see what it holds in store for us. The Rubicon Trail, about five hours north of San Francisco, is a really old path that has been in use first by the Indians, then it was a county road in the 30s and now is a landmark when it comes to off-road trails. The challenge is the extremely rocky ground it meanders through over its 18 mile or 29 kilometer length. So difficult is the track that our guides, people who regularly clamber over these rocks, say it takes two days to traverse the whole thing. And just like Porsche likes to test at Nürburgring, off-roadability in the Wrangler is developed and proven here at the Rubicon. The Wrangler doesn't disappoint either, crawling sure-footedly and with little apparent effort over terrain that photographers found it hard to walk through. You did, as a driver, have to learn though that the rock bars and the skid plates, which are urban accessories, would be put to use and that metal on rock was a sound we would have to repeatedly listen to, get used to, to expect and to treat it as a matter of course, just like the Wranglers did. An hour of the trail showed clearly how at home the Wrangler is on this incredibly hard terrain and why it is just such a distinctive off-road automotive icon. Now, if you look at the Wrangler, it's a very, very distinctive shape. And I'll tell you this, if I'm standing on the side of the car for a particular reason, and if you look behind me, the body panels have absolutely no sculpting, no definition, no design on it. And what it basically says to me is this is built to a purpose and we've been watching this purpose all morning and we're going to continue to watch it through the rest of the day. It's a very simple looking uh, vehicle. It's a very, very specific kind of uh, vehicle and it's a shape that a lot of other off-roaders have at some point or the other uh, tried to ape, copy or imitate in some form or the other. But I can tell you this, on the trail we went pretty close to obstacles on the sides and because the body is flat-sided and that's why it's flat-sided, you tend not to touch anything unexpectedly. It's just brilliant on the trail. Part of it is the design. The utilitarian exterior design carries on inside the car as well. The cabin and appointments are well made, but the eye is clearly on your being able to use the space and features easily. It isn't outright luxurious, but the cabin is unfailingly honest, extremely easy to live with, and when the rocks underneath are jostling you about, in a strange way it feels as correct for the Wrangler as the exterior. To live with every day, I'd say the cabin is comfy but not extraordinarily spacious, but this won't bug you too much. Driving SUVs over the last few years, you get used to the idea of there being a diesel engine under the hood, but the Wrangler, this Wrangler doesn't have one, it's got a petrol engine. And it's kind of strange because when you start driving, your first thing is, are you going to miss all that talk that diesels are famous for, which is going to sort of get you clambering through the trail. And to be honest, I haven't missed it. We've been in four low for the last uh, few um, kilometers and uh, you really don't have to put much gas. You expect that you're going to have to rev up the petrol, but uh, you don't really have to. It just clambers over uh, on top. But that having been said, it just occurred to me that the last time I drove a petrol engine off-roader was the Maruti Suzuki Gypsy. So we're about six kilometers into the Rubicon Trail. There's still a lot of ground to cover before we get to our camp. And they're telling us that this was the easy part of the trail. But honestly, if you're not a hardcore off-road nut who's out every weekend trying to push your luck, that's already pretty difficult. And they're telling us that what lies ahead is seriously crazy. But I have to say that the car is really impressive uh, on this kind of terrain. Uh, it just doesn't seem to take any notice of what's going on. And now and then you'll hear noises of the frame grinding out or maybe the transmission case grinding out. And it doesn't seem to affect it in the least. I mean, it just goes through the whole thing. I'm very, very impressed. The trail guides responded to our worried faces by explaining that these top Wrangler models come with full skid plates and were meant to do this. So a clang here and a grunge there was not at all unusual. In India, the exact model selection is still to be revealed, but the top models will definitely be there. The questions are few, including which engine will come, this 3.6-litre V6 or the smaller four-cylinder. But in all cases, what we will be able to buy is an iconic shape, a lot of off-road ability and all the hardcore outdoorsy image you'd ever want. The ability to back up the promise will be there, but unfortunately, you and I both know that most of the ability will be used in the social playground rather than off-road. So what is the Wrangler like on road? Well, I honestly can't tell you because I haven't had a chance to try it. But Bertie was here a couple of months ago. He drove this car in Texas and he told us that it's not as 
difficult as you think it would be to drive on road given how good it is off road it's actually a reasonably good car to drive on road but we'll just have to take Bertie's word for it because honestly these wheels today have not seen a single piece of tarmac